we are looking at lesson 5.1 today, which is titled Polynomials, which part of that is a review from what you've done in Algebra 1. Now, I say review because you talked about polynomials in Algebra 1. However, it doesn't necessarily remember anything about polynomials in Algebra 1. So we'll take care of that. If you start looking at um, the very top, defines a polynomial. Polynomial being the addition and subtraction of x values with real number coefficients and whole number powers is what that's supposed to say. So addition, subtraction of x values, real number coefficients, and whole number powers. Last chapter, we were dealing with those quadratics, right? x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's an example of a polynomial because you've got x's, you've got coefficients, and it's adding, subtracting the terms. We also talked about standard form last chapter. Did you talk about standard form on the test yesterday? That was something on the test, right? Standard form of a polynomial is when the polynomial is written from, I say, highest power to lowest power. Um, they use, what, decreasing degree. So in other words, where your biggest power comes first. The standard form that you had on the test yesterday, ax squared plus bx plus c, where you've got your highest power of x squared, then your x, and then your constant. Now, we're going to look at this chart here, and it talks about polynomial classifications. We're going to classify polynomials in two different ways. We're going to classify them by their degree, which it relates to the highest power, and by the number of terms. If we look at the left side here, okay, if we look at the left side, and we talk about, so like if I look at this bottom example right here, negative x to the fifth plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. When we're talking about classifying something by the degree, the degree relates to the highest power. And as you look at this, what's the highest power in use on this one? And there's a high power of 5. Because the highest power is 5, that means that this polynomial has a degree of 5. And 5, what's the word for a fifth degree? And that is quintic. When your highest power is 5, we'll call it a quintic. On the example above, I'm going to work my way up. 2x to the 4th plus 5x squared. What's the highest power? That's x to the 4th. So that has degree 4, and degree 4 we call it a quartic. So what can you guess, guess about degree 3? Degree 3, your highest power will be a 3, and we call it a cubic. What about degree 2? What do we call a degree 2 when the highest power is 2? Quadratic. Didn't we just do this all last chapter? Okay, we've worked a lot with quadratics, so when the highest power is 2, we call it a quadratic, or in this case, it's the only power. Degree 1. Degree 1, there's a high power of 1, so on something like x plus 4, that's like x to the first plus 4. Well, when the high power is 1, what is it? That makes a line, so we call it linear. And the last one, degree 0. What do you notice with this degree 0 example? There is no x. And since there is no x, you can think of this, if you want, as 5x to the 0. But when there is no x, it's like having an x to the 0. So that's degree 0, and we call that a constant, because 5 is just a constant number. So those are the names we're going to use when we are naming polynomials based on the degree, so based on the highest power. If we look over at the right, it talks about naming using the number of terms. So like on this top example, 5, that is just one term, right? There's nothing else added or subtract, it's just one term. And when there is one term, we're going to call it a monomial. 
mono being the root for one. Someone earlier today referenced science. They've talked about that. When there are two terms, such as x plus 4, so two terms being added together, it's a binomial. My reference is a bicycle. Two terms, two wheels. Um, if you jump down to the one that has three terms, one, two, three, it's going to be called a trinomial. And look at the one on the bottom row. There's one, two, three, four terms. What's the generic name for it? Polynomial with four terms. It also means if there's five terms, we could say polynomial with five terms, six terms, seven terms, however many you need to. But we only have specific names for one, two, and three terms. Mono, bi, and trinomial. Okay? So, we're going to, in example one, we're going to do three different things. The three things we've talked about. We're going to write these polynomials in standard form, and then we're going to classify each polynomial by the degree and the number of terms. So, polynomial in standard form, and we're going to classify by degree, which is the first set of vocabulary I went over, and then by number of terms, which is the vocabulary I just went over. So look at example A, 3x plus 9x squared plus 5. Thoughts on standard form? <coughs> Bless you. What's standard form going to look like here? Okay. Notice the 9x squared comes first because the highest power is a 2. So, 9x squared plus 3x plus 5. So, going from the highest power to the lowest power. Now, we have standard form. Now, you guys have to help me out with naming it. You can't say quietly on this today because I don't want one person doing all the naming and I don't want to tell you these names. So 9x squared plus 3x plus 5. What do we name it based on the degree and based on the number of terms? So two names here. Thoughts? Quadratic? Why would we say quadratic? Yeah, the highest power is x to the second which makes it a quadratic and how many terms are there? How many pieces being added and subtracted? Three. Three? What is that, Luke? Trinomial. Trinomial. And there are three terms. It's a trinomial. So I would call this a quadratic trinomial. Okay, I'm writing down things like x squared and three terms just for reference in the notes. If you don't need those, I get it. It's so helpful if you look back later at them or something. Okay, ready for B? Standard form on B. Okay, so the question becomes, do we have to combine terms? And, you know, if you think about, okay, if we're going standard form, what's the highest power there? Highest power is x to the fourth. What's the next highest power? x to the second. But what do you notice? There are two of them. Well, how do we decide which comes first? You don't. You put them together. So, yes, you are cleaning it up and putting like terms together. So, as I put my squareds together, negative 6x squared plus 10x squared plus 4x squared. And then I still have a what? Okay. 
plus 4x and minus 12. So x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4x minus 12. Okay, we got to name it. Thoughts on how we name this? Highest power is what? Four, which makes it a quartic. X to the fourth makes it quartic. How many terms do I have this time? Once I cleaned it up, I have four. Okay, and there is an importance in cleaning up because your answer will be based on four terms. What do we call it when there's four terms? Polynomial with four terms. Nothing fancy there. Okay. C. 3x cubed minus x plus 5x to the fourth. Standard form. What comes first? 5x to the fourth, because that four is highest. And then 3x to the third minus x. Okay. What kind of name does this have? Quartic? Quartic what? Trinomial? Because there's three terms, right? X to the fourth makes it quartic. Three terms again makes it a trinomial. Okay, takes us to D, 3 minus 4x to the fifth plus 2x squared plus 10. Standard form. What comes first? Yeah, it says 4x to the fifth. Notice there's a minus in front of it, so negative 4x to the fifth. Then what? 2x to the second. And then? Yeah, we've got a regular 3 and a regular 10, and 3 plus 10 makes it 13. Okay. What's its name? Quintic? Trinomial? X to the fifth says quintic and three terms says trinomial. Okay, got that stuff down? Definitely not too bad of stuff there. In all honesty, as I said, you would have seen that in Algebra 1 most likely. So it should be a little familiar. Okay, the 
other piece we are looking at down here is example two. And as we look at this, you will notice it says graphing cubic functions. And when we talk about graphing cubic functions, we're going to look at the graphs of them. And as we look at the graphs of them, we're also going to talk about something called end behavior and turning points. And when you go to do the homework, it will ask you about end behavior and turning points. So actually, I'm going to put it on here um, next to this that we're also going to determine end behavior and turning points. And as I said, you'll be asked about in behavior. In behavior, yes. I think turning points in homework. I can't remember if turning points is in homework or not. I think it is. We'll see. Okay, so it asks us what is the graph of each function and describe the graph. So to describe me, we're going to talk about in behavior and turning points. But when we talk about cubic functions, do you remember what a cubic function looks like? Might have come up in here before, I'm not sure. Do you know what a cubic function looks like? So when I'm talking cubic function, I'm talking y equals x cubed. And this kind of squiggle right here. For those of you sitting in class, I actually didn't get it erased from last class. It's this graph here on the board where it starts low. It's an increasing graph and it ends up top, right? Okay, that is your basic y equals x cubed. The graphs we're looking at here in the notes are based off of y equals x cubed. Now, when we look at a graph like this, the end behavior on this type of graph is what we would call down and up. Because where does this graph start? When you start at the left and you're drawing it, it starts down. And then you're drawing it, it's increasing, and then where do you end? And you end up. So when we talk about end behavior today, at least at Algebra 2 level, we, just, we use things like down and up, up and down, up and up, or down and down. Okay, it just refers to where it's starting. So cubic graph here starts down, ends up. So you'll see me write down and up. And if someone third hour said they think of it as down to up, because you start down and go to up. Okay. If we think about, let's go back and talk about your quadratics for a moment. The quadratics, the y equals x squared. What's a quadratic look like? Y equals x squared is the parabola, yes. What kind of end behavior is a parabola going to have? Where does it start on the left-hand side? A parabola starts where? It starts up, yes, because it's going up to infinity. And then you come, you curve down, and you go back where? On the right side, you're going to go up. Okay, so something like a parabola is going to have up and up end behavior. And what it's always going to come down to determining based on the power. So whether that power is even or odd. Something like a quadratic that has an even power. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Their end behavior is either going to be up, up, or down, down. Something like a cubic, which has the odd end behavior, or odd power. So 3, 5, 7. That end behavior is either going to be down, up, or up, down. What causes, think about it, what causes a parabola to go from being up, up to down, down? What do you put in front of that x squared? A negative, yes. If it's positive x squared, it's traditional up, up parabola, yes. Both sides are pointing up. But if you make it negative x squared, that parabola goes upside down. And then where do those two ends go? 
they both go down. And so that's in behavior of down, down. Now, down here in the right, and I'll show you here in a little bit, I have a chart that you can get at the end of class that will kind of help you with that. But for the moment, I want to go through and talk about example A and B here. Okay? Um, now, first of all, all of this is based on the highest power. What is the highest power in example A? Well, it's the only power, right? It's y equals x cubed. So when we talk about in behavior, if it is just a basic x cubed, and notice it's a positive x cubed, what am I expecting out of in behavior? It starts where? Starts down and ends where? Up. So this y equals 1 half x cubed is going to have in behavior that is down and up. So let me write that down here. Now, Something that you're not familiar with is turning points. And turning points is like this graph, this y equals x cubed that we've been looking at. It doesn't have any turning points because it just goes up, right? It's just an increasing graph. The graph with turning points is a graph that it's going up, and then it turns and goes down, and then it turns and goes back up. Okay, or in other words, it has turns. To determine if something has turning points, if there is just the one power, it's not going to have any turning points, okay? So if it's just x cubed. If there were other x terms, so like if there's a plus x squared or a minus x, if there are other x squared or x terms, x squared or x tacked on here, that's what's going to help you determine if there are turning points. In this case, because it's just x cubed, this one is not going to have any turning points, okay? And I'm, we're going to look at the graph, which will help explain a lot here in a moment. But I did want to write down that this graph has no turning points. And if you want to write a reason, it's because there's no other x terms. And when I say no other x terms, I'm meaning there's no x's or x squared. There's only that high value of x cubed. Now, I do want to look at the graph and help explain all of this. If we don't know exactly what a graph looks like or where a graph is, we tend to make an XY chart. So let's make an XY chart here. What are good X values to use in an XY chart? 0, 1, 2. Go the other way for me also. Besides 0, Positive 1 and positive 2, also negative 1 and negative 2. So for my x values, I'm going to write negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. How do I find my y values? How do I find the y values? Take your x values and plug into the equation. So plug it into 1 half x cubed. Would life be better if I start with the positives? We're plugging into 1 half x cubed. If I plug in 2, Start by doing 2 to the third. What's 2 to the third? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And then what's half of 8? 4. So we have the ordered pair 2 comma 4. Okay, plug in 1. 1 to the third. 1 times 1 times 1. 1, 
half of one. One half, or if you prefer decimals, 0.5. What about zero? What's zero to the third? Zero. What's half of zero? Zero. Okay, that was your warm-up. Now we've got to do negatives. Negative one to the third. Negative one times negative one times negative one. Negative one. Remember when you multiply an odd number of negatives, it becomes negative. What's half of negative one? Negative one half. And now negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 8. Half of negative 8. Negative 4. Okay. I'm going to sketch a little graph right here. You only have to be able to go two each left and right and four up and down. Negative two, negative four, we're going to go where? Left two, down four. Negative one, negative one half. Left one, down a half. Zero, zero. Right there. One, one half. Right one, up a half. And two, four. Right two, up four. Do those dots make a pretty easy graph to connect? Start low, continue up. Connect your dots from left to right. Now, think about it. We said our end behavior was down and up. Does this match with the end behavior we described? Down and up. It starts down, it ends up. We said no turning points, or I said no turning points. Did my graph ever turn? No, it, when I say turning points, I'm talking turning and going the other direction. It just continued increasing, so no turning points. Okay, the only difference between this and your basic y equals x cubed is this is technically a little compressed, not quite as tall. Okay, so that's some basic information there about graphing the cubic and answering some questions. Now, I'm not going to do C and D, but I do want to go through B. Okay, there's some good things I can compare here. So when you're ready, let's go back up to B. B is y equals 3x minus x to the third. What's the highest power term here? x to the third. And notice it's a minus x to the third, right? So the fact that my highest power is still an x to the third helps me to describe in behavior. Because that power is odd, and this is what's on the chart that I'm going to give you here in a little bit, because that power is odd, x to the third, my choices are down and up or up and down. Now, what's different about this problem? My x cubed term is negative. Guess what happens? Instead of starting down and ending up, this one's going to start up and end down. So my end behavior on this one is up and down. points. My reasoning on the last one for saying that there were no turning points is that there were no other x terms. There was just the x cubed term. There's no x squareds, no x's, nothing. 
What about this one? We have the minus x cubed. Do we have any other x terms? We have a 3x. So what tends to happen when you throw in those x squareds and x's is that, yes, turning points start being included. Now, turning points always have to happen in pairs, meaning that if you're drawing your graph, you're going up, and you turn, and you turn and go down, well, you still have to turn and go back up to continue the shape of the graph. Okay? Otherwise, you're totally changing the shape of the graph. Since this has a power of 3, the most turns we can have, it has to occur in pairs, so even numbers, so the most turns we can have are 2. And so we're going to have two turning points on this graph. Part of my reasoning for saying that there's two turning points or that there's any turning points is that this time there are other x terms that existed. In other words, whether it's x or x squared, we still had other x terms. And so that's why I can say, yes, there are turning points. You can never have an odd number of turning points. They're always even. Okay? So I had to say 2 this time because it can never be more than your highest power. So it can never be more than a power of 3 in this case. Now, I want to look at the graph especially on this one because I want to make sure you can see it. And see what it looks like. So again, let's do an xy chart. What x values am I going to have you use? Same x values as last time, right? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Where am I plugging them into this time? Three x minus x cubed which means I'm going to be doing 3 times my number minus my number cubed. You can pick any number you want to start by plugging in. I'll just start with the negative 2 and get it out of the way. Think through with me. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 minus negative 2 to the third. What's negative 2 to the third? Negative 8. Negative 6 minus negative 8. What happens here? Keep, change, opposite is what my middle school teaching ways say. Negative 6 plus 8 is? Two. Okay, change it up. This time I'm going to put negative one in there. Three times negative one. Negative three minus what's negative one to the third? Negative one times negative one times negative one is negative one. What about negative 3 minus negative 1? Minus the negative makes it positive, so negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. What happens when you put in 0? 3 times 0 minus 0 cubed. It's 0. Okay, put in 1. 3 times 1, three minus 1 to the third. Did I do that right? 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 to the third. 3 minus 1 is 2. Put in 2. 3 times 2, 6, minus 2 to the 8, 2 to the 8, huh. 2 to the 3rd, 8, 6 minus 8, negative 2. Okay, 
This is a small graph. You only have to be able to go to each direction. So I'm drawing a graph in that open spot right there. You can start graphing those points as you get ready. Okay. So negative two, two. Left two, up two. Negative one, negative two. Left one, down two. Zero, zero. One, two. Right one, up two. And two, negative two. Right two. Okay, it looks like an X, doesn't it? However, think about this, guys. What we say about end behavior. Up, down. Meaning it starts on the it starts up on the left side, it ends down on the right side. And then also connect your points in order from left to right, or basically in order how we did them. Keep in mind, I also said that there's going to be two turning points, right? So can you see where this is going? We start up, we're going to go down here, we're going to connect this dot, we're going to turn, go up through the origin, we're going to turn again, and we're going to end down. Does that match up with everything I talked about with this graph? Excuse this announcement. This interruption for a few announcements. Fantastic Friday is tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the Auto Miller Gym. Also, athletics tonight, girls' JV basketball will be at home at 6 p.m. and varsity basketball will follow afterwards. Thank you and have a great day. Oh, I'm thankful for short announcements today. Okay, the chart that can help you with your end behavior. Okay, that's what this chart is helping you with, is end behavior, because it kind of summarizes exactly how to think through your end behavior. Okay, um, so it talks about if A is positive, so if the sign in front of your biggest term is positive or negative, and then if N, the exponent is even or odd, is what it tells you. So like if it's even and positive, that's up, up, like a parabola. If, it, if n is even, so even power, but there's a negative out front, it's down and down, like an upside down parabola. If you have an odd power, so that's like our x to the thirds. If we have an odd power and you have a positive out front, it's down and up. If you have an odd power, but you have a negative out front, it's up and down. Okay, so that chart is designed to be helpful on homework. Your homework is lesson 5.1 in Math Excel. Okay? Make sure you get it done for tomorrow, please. And I will leave this chart up here.